Yesterday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. is considering a ban on Russian oil imports. We are now in, uh, in very active discussions with our European partners uh, about banning the, uh, the import of Russian oil uh, to our countries, while, of course, at the same time, maintaining a steady uh, global supply of, uh, of oil. That was Secretary Blinken yesterday on Meet the Press, but an administration official said today that no decision has been made at this time. Calls for a full embargo have been growing in volume as Russia continues its invasion of Ukraine. Republicans, joined by some Democrats, point out that uh, exempting Russia's single largest industry provides Moscow with hundreds of millions of dollars in cash revenue each day, each day, from the European Union, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Joining me now to talk more about this is uh, Congressman August Pfluger, who is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and ranking member on the House Committee on Homeland Security, on uh, the Subcommittee on uh, Intelligence and Counter Counter Terrorism. He represents the 11th Congressional District of Texas. I said he was uh, coming to us from Texas. He is actually in D.C., but he represents a good chunk of Texas. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Well, Tony, thank you very much uh, for having me today. Let me ask you this. Are you encouraged that a ban on Russian oil is now in consideration? Well, I'll be encouraged when it actually happens. And my question for the administration is, what are you waiting on? You know, does, how many nuclear power facilities have to be attacked? How many thousands of Ukrainians have to be killed? How many horrific images do we have to watch in the country of Ukraine uh, the shelling, the artillery, the bombing. I mean, wh what's it going to take? I mean, this needs to happen now. And, you know, the, the press secretary made a comment uh, it, maybe a day or two ago saying something to the effect of, you know, we have to be concerned about the global supply of oil because if we limit that supply by placing an embargo or, or um, you know, doing something with the Russian supply that it may drive prices up. Well, I'd, I'd like to say that they started that on January 20th of last year when they took office, that they did something to the global supply because their full-on assault against our own domestic production has limited supply throughout the world. Uh, and, and now it's time to be strong, uh, to reverse course, uh, and to help the Ukrainians out by not putting pocket money into the pocket of Putin. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've uh, well, I say we, I don't want to use that word too generally. It, this administration has put us into this situation, as you pointed out, with their domestic production policies. We now are in this bind. Now, you have introduced legislation uh, entitled Midland over Moscow, returning a focus on domestic oil production. Explain. Well, that's exactly right. Midland over Moscow is not just some catchy phrase. It actually gets us back to energy dominance. And it does three things. Number one is it focuses on domestic production. It unleashes the innovation that we have right here. I represent the Permian Basin, but there's plenty of producing regions in the United States that we can get back to energy dominance. Number two is it requires the White House to come up with an energy security plan. What is their plan to make our energy not only good for our domestic use, reliable, affordable, but also how does it help our partners and our allies? And number three, it opens up market access by cutting the bureaucratic red tape throughout the world and allowing us to export that product where it needs to go to again, provide that reliability. Energy security is national security. Midland over Moscow puts our own domestic energy front and center in the world stage. And I truly believe we wouldn't be in this situation had the administration done this. I think you're 100 percent correct, Congressman Pfluger. I mean, this is this is really not difficult to figure out. I mean, we we have cut off domestic production. We were at a point uh, in the last administration of energy independence, first time in uh, in. in really as far back as I can remember when I worked in the oil field in Oklahoma, that we were producing oil to the degree that we were export, exporting it. Now we're dependent upon Russian oil, the president having conversations, well, the administration having conversations with Venezuela, and now the president may travel to Saudi Arabia, making us dependent once again upon Middle Eastern oil. You know, at what point in time is the administration going to learn the lesson? We don't need Iranian oil, Russian oil. We don't need OPEC to be producing more. We have what we need right here, and we can do the job better and cleaner than anybody else. You know, just a couple of short weeks ago, I was in Ukraine 
on a congressional delegation, had the chance to meet with senior leaders, including President Zelensky, and we talked about energy security. He said he did not believe that we would be in this situation if the Nord Stream project did not exist. I mean, think about what that statement is, that energy security is such a degree of national security that the president of Ukraine did not think that we would be in a situation that his country would be invaded by Putin. We don't need to be brokering deals with Iran or Venezuela or any other malign actor. We've got what we have right here. We need to focus on domestic energy production. That's what Midland over Moscow represents. But just uh, this afternoon, uh, Gas Buddy came out and identified that we now have reached the highest level ever for uh, gasoline, just slightly eclipsing uh, what we had back in 2008. Uh, now, Congressman, we can't flip a switch and get the production rolling to address this current crisis today. What's the timeline? If the president and the administration were to get it right, begin domestic production, how long would it take us to get out of this bind? Well, the production is, uh, you know, in the Permian Basin, for instance, is actually at a really good level. But, but the problem is that the facilities, the pipelines, I mean, there are plenty of pipelines that the Biden administration uh, has refused to certify. They've weaponized some of the agencies and departments and they won't certify them. So getting that product to the ports, to the Gulf Coast, to the East Coast, to the Atlantic, so that it can then be shipped over, that's going to take time. It's going to take time to build those facilities. We need to cut the red tape. And, and start planning and permitting export terminals in this country. That will take several years. I mean, you have to imagine that's two to three years from the time that you say, yes, we're gonna do it to the time that it actually gets built, maybe even longer. So right. reversing course is a step-by-step -step process, but we need to take right. that first and most important step right now. Uh, but, but even with that, you know, the oil prices, a lot of it is driven by speculation. Should just the fact that America is making the right policy decisions is going to take a little bit of the edge off as people realize there is a solution uh, down the road. Congressman, we're up against a break. Always great to talk with you. Thank you for your leadership on uh, Capitol Hill. Tony, thank you. Great to see you. And thank you for getting this story out.